Hello everybody, you probably know that we have a lot of topics right now that are going on at the same time. There's the Trump derangement syndrome, there is the censorship problem, there is the coronavirus problem. Um, um, there are a million problems, uh, both local in, in Germany where I'm based, as well as internationally. And uh, I want, I actually want to introduce you a little bit into my my problem with selecting the problem to talk about, and that is that the big t uh, the big issues that really concern me that affect my future, like uh, economic problems, like uh, the energy price problem, the energy politics of Germany, that is something that's coming to you in America right now because uh, Joe Biden has already sworn that he will roll out the uh, constant um, California blackout uh, situation to the entire nation, uh, and uh, we are also having a very dodgy electricity situation here as well with the highest uh, price, the highest utility bills uh, per capita I think on the planet. And um, as such there are there are like a million things I could talk about and my, my big issue is that I can't decide what is worth researching. And so I've spent the, the past week to research one topic which I will not share with you right now uh, but I hope in later few videos I will eventually um, f uh, use uh, information uh, from that research uh, to, to improve the content of uh, the things that I talk about. Uh, but I spent an entire week researching something and um, I fell into something that I used to call the um, research rabbit hole. Um, you probably know the Alice in Wonderland um, uh, novel and the um, Disney movie. Um, you see that den where the rabbit uh, disappears and then you follow and you think, oh, you know what, I could actually just uh, look into it. Okay, so I start my research and I look into it, into that little den. <laughs> I mean, you know, what could that be? Uh, that looks very short and then I, I crawl and I crawl and crawl and woo! Uh, down it goes and I appear in, in Wonderland where the Queen of Hearts, Angela Merkel, tries to chop off my head. And this happens again and again and again. And what I can do then is to either talk about a small topic that um, I don't crawl in uh, too much into and that is already well explored in previous videos like a history about racism. I could just look into an incident. Um, for example, there is a party, a, a fun party, a comedy party that uh, was um, was literally founded as a comedy project but was registered as a political party and blah 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 and they have of course now a fallout over a joke so you know there are racism allegations and so on and so on and I could talk about it but you all have heard it anyways haven't you so I would not really bring new information to the table and I doubt that people in Great Britain in Australia and so on uh, need an, an extra example of the anti-racism hysteria right now so that is pointless, isn't it? I could talk about violent crimes, of course. There's, uh, there are some more examples this week where some some Afghan or some um, African um, people from God knows where uh, massacre people in the streets. Uh, it's just a number in the statistics, so who cares, you know? None of the uh, none of our elites, those who are so terribly obsessed about the riots on the Capitol Hill, seem to care about these things. So. Um, well, you do care, but you don't really care about the individual case because you know already uh, the scale and scope by and large. So this is not a matter I really want to talk about because if I do become more systematic about it, if I have to do the research, uh, that will be just another rabbit hole, right? So I would have to look into the police statistics, how they are compiled, what the flaws are, um, who are the convicted uh, murderers, why do so many people come uh, get away with violence, um, who gets convicted for violence, who does not, what judges are leaning w uh, into what direction, um, uh, in what areas of the countries uh, do things happen one way or the other, um, so, you know, if I would systematize this topic, it would require me to go into ever more research. So a hot take on an individual case doesn't really help you. And um, I have already a number of uh, long last, long winding research projects uh, going on. So that doesn't help either. So I want to talk about uh, what is on top of my mind after all. Um, without all the dance, uh, the rabbit dance that may f uh, lead me to another wonderland, uh, all the things that we already uh, know by and large about, um, 
we we still have something that we we deeply care and yet we have no words for them and right now of course this is the overall political divide um we see how the entire western world no matter where you live is falling apart either people are moving from california um, to the heartland of america uh, or from new york uh, away or they are leaving london or they are uh, leaving the cities no matter where uh, because it can no longer coexist with the political left and likewise the political left does everything to purge conservatives from uh, uh, from the platforms um, whatever platforms there are sometimes um, in, in most cases right now the talk of the day is of course all the the technological platforms but this extends they really they also don't want to give you a microphone they don't want to give you a stage it goes on and on and on so we literally can't share any space anymore either virtual or real and so it comes as no surprise that yesterday i wanted to uh, watch a show um, that was attended by a Harvard professor and I thought I'd make just a low effort video about how stupid this Harvard professor is. Uh, she appeared on a German TV show, she's a German speaker and I could not watch more than five minutes of it because um, I was just flooded with lies. Um, the topic was of course Donald Trump because we don't have our own continent apparently. Uh, at least not in the media circles. They are laser focused on other countries and other continents, as you would expect normally in open dictatorships like uh, Syria or Iraq, um, where you know you don't get to talk, to hear about the problems right in front of your door. You're constantly uh, directed. Uh, your your attention is constantly redirected to other places. And so I had uh, a, a look at the show, and um, it was all the. Um, there were there is no evidence for water fraud and before dear YouTube you're taking it down I have not even researched it okay because I, I do have my own continent I do have my own country and as such I try to, to draw attention to what's going on in front of my door I pay some attention to what's going on outside and I think here we are cutting to the core of the problem really and that is the level of trust uh, the eroding trust right now um, I could not watch more than five minutes of that stupid show because um, they were claiming that there is no evidence no uh, evidence into voter fraud or for the voter fraud allegations and uh, as i said i have not researched it because i live somewhere else i pay some reasonable attention to american politics because i ask people to also have some reasonable uh, interest in what's going on in europe but you know the nitty-gritty of um, how the machine works and where the servers are and blah, blah, blah. sorry that's just too much for somebody who comes from outside um so i i'm not taking any sides i'm not investigating the claims um, but I have seen already videos of people filling out ballots so to claim that there is no evidence that's definitely a lie okay that's definitely a lie and I'm faced with the um, the question do you really want to trust your own eyes or do you want to trust the government and I hate this I, I don't really want to decide between my own eyes and the government and of course here with evidence I mean not I don't have conclusive evidence um, seeing some videos does not mean that um, you, you, there are enough ballots um, to shift the, the election in one way or another but uh, the, the claim that there is no evidence that is a lie and it comes it flies right into my face and I'm, I'm really pissed about this um, and uh, this gaslighting has eroded our trust over the years and it materializes now in all kind of areas we are withdrawing ourselves into our little bubbles and i think they are all becoming now a bit cultish uh, independent of how they started because um, also people who lied to you in the past may sometimes say something that may be true and it is really difficult and you have to go back case by case unfortunately to sort out who is right and who is wrong the thing is and this really comes with being a content creator where you actually have to research occasionally your own stuff um, that you do recognize you cannot know everything obviously you cannot know everything and there is a level of trust you have to you have to lend somebody and those who have already disappointed you on a different topic are hard to trust anymore 
uh, that does not mean that you are certainly a know-it-all and that you look into the topics and you know already the ends of it, you understand all the chemistry uh, of the PCR tests and everything that's involved and, and so on and so on and so on. Um, so you are not an expert only because somebody else who was called an expert had lied to you on a different topic. And what we are facing is an incredible erosion of trust over the past years. Being a European this started with a Brexit referendum when uh, the left uh, and the Remainers, when they claimed that uh, everybody who wanted to go out of the European Union was a liar and they did not substantiate their claims. They always repeated the same example of the NHS, that is the health, uh, the, the taxpayer funded health service in the UK, uh, that uh, they would get more money or could get more money. That was actually the actual claim. They could get more money if, um, uh, if the money would not be sent to the European Union. So the claim they called a lie and used as evidence that all people who wanted to leave the EU are blatant liars all the time uh, was that um, uh, if you spend a, a euro in one thing at one end, like uh, the European Union, you cannot spend it also on the NHS. And that was a big, big lie that uh, um, unmasked all these Brexiteers as liars and therefore you should not um, listen to them anymore and they are discredited now. Discredited was a word that was uh, widely used. So we have now discredited one another. Um, we've just called each other liars all the time um, and a lot of lies had been told. So now everybody is discredited. Um, we are all uh, unmasked as liars and in such a situation it's nearly impossible to kind of get around and uh, to um, agree on anything anymore. And then there were a lot of people uh, who spoke about truth. Um, a lot of those were inspired by religious talk, um, you know, the, the truth of the Bible and so on and so on. But this, um, this is a mannerism, a speech code that we usually do understand and can translate to what it ultimately means. Um, if you go into, po uh, into politics or into any um, non a spiritual discussion. If you if you talk about worldly things, then a truth uh, becomes uh, something like a self righteous uh, proclamation, uh, and we are not seeking the truth, but at least we want to seek honesty. And what we are missing is a base level of honesty right now. However, and this is where it forks again. Um, there seem to be a substantial number of people, particularly on the media side, a type of personality that does not care about the validity of their claims. It, they do not care. And I have uh, noticed they do not even have the insight that uh, the words they c that come out of their mouths should match anything. They use terminology that um, by and large is undefined, for example. And I think they, these people really don't care. They repeat one another, they echo one another, but they don't really mean anything they say. And this is, I think, what BS comes from. Um, there was a, a university um, game, a rhetoric game, rhetoric club, so to say, where somebody comes to speak and um, he does not really care about the topic. He's just given one and um, what he is to pay attention to is how he looks, how he, how he appears, how con convincing his word choices are and so on. But he does not care if anything of, of what he says is true or not. So a rhetoric class was called a BS se session as far as I know. And this is the, the fork outside of the uh, trying to be honest or, or, or being openly dishonest. There are people who are who are not interested in the reality because some people are not even dishonest. They don't even they don't care enough to either be honest or dishonest. They do not care what comes out of their mouth. And this makes cohabitation nearly impossible. If you cannot rely on anybody anymore, uh, A, because he is dishonest or B, it's even worse in my point of view. He does not notice if he is dishonest or not because he does not care about the meaning of the words that come out of his mouth. So these are these two fundamental pro um, people that are now constituting, I think, to a large degree, the political left and the media landscape. Um, and um, 
you cannot listen to them and they by definition have absolutely no ambition whatsoever to listen to you. And the big challenge of our times is that we have to bridge this divide. And I absolutely have no idea because there seems to be a third layer to this. So again, there was this layer that uh, people are honest or dishonest and then there's the layer about, uh, you know, the people who don't even actively lie because they just don't care about the meanings of the words that come out of their mouth. And then there are the people who cannot even pay attention to anything that goes on. They, they don't even want to comment on anything. They just want um, an, a, a nice dinner uh, this night and they want to watch uh, football. It, they cannot be bothered with anything. They don't even, they don't even try to uh, seek esteem by saying something like this uh, second layer group that does not care what comes out of their mouth. Uh. So I guess this video is a bit lazy because I don't provide you with new information. I don't give you a new update of what is going on in uh, Europe as the theater of the cultural war uh, that is globally unfolding. Um, it's just it's just me trying to make sense of it. Um, and we all don't know at this point where this is all heading. Um, we have lost our trust and with the trust we have lost the ability to form bonds in any meaningful way. And I think all relationships, uh, being romantic as well as um, ordinary friendly relationships, they are to some degree built on trust. And trust does not come with um, uh, the deception uh, on the, and the enforcement of, um, of censorship and telling people that they should not pay attention to anything that contradicts a certain worldview. Trust uh, that uh, that deserves its name is based on a level of honesty. So um, into those uh, three levels, um, the there is only a fraction of people who actually abide to honesty. Um, people who don't pay attention at all don't care about um, honesty or not honesty. They care about uh, the TV show uh, at night. And then there are the people who don't care about what comes out of their mouth, uh, who are strategic about this. And then there are the people who actively lie for this or that ambition, uh, who are dishonest. And you have only this very f a fraction of people that uh, cares about what's going on around them and who are honest about their views. Um, that was it for today and I'll see you soon. Bye.